Chibi the Podcast, presented by Just Chibi Productions. Hi there, I'm your host, Fondue. And I'm Cheesy. In this week, we're going to learn about the 10 worst ranked cheeses in the world, Whoa. according to tasteatlas.com. Mm. We're going to talk about hints of onion and sour cream. Okay. We're talking music, oh. maggots, Ew. old socks, Ew. and processed cheese. Oh. And of course, no episode would be complete without our very cheesy joke. Yeah, joke. Stay tuned for episode 82. Bad cheese, bad cheese. Bad on cheese, just bad cheesy, cheesy, the podcast. On March 30th, 2023, tasteatlas.com posted their 10 worst rated cheeses in the world. Wow. We talked about their 100 best cheeses in the world in our episode 68 Top Cheese from March of this same year. I remember. And if you recall, the French were very upset. Yeah. They didn't have a lot of cheeses in the top 100. No. But I think this bottom 10 cheese list might get a few people upset. Coming in at number 10, we have one that I can barely pronounce. It's called Tiorla Almancas, I think. (sighs) According to Hoimlish.com, This cheese is matured for six months. It's considered meadow cheese. It has, they say, a predominance of fragrant passion fruit, walnut, and malt. And apparently it also has notes of white bread, fried onions, and buttermilk. It says here it even has refreshing hints of sour cream. Frankly, I think we're off to a weak start here because that cheese sounds yummy. Coming in at number nine, we have a cheese from Italy, Piemonte is the home to this particular cheese. It's cow and sheep milk cheese. It's pasteurized. Okay. When this particular cheese is aged, okay. it stays on mats of straw. Ew. According to frescaitalia.com, it says here that those mats, the mats of straw, oh. actually impart earthy notes to the cheese. Okay. It's a mold-encrusted cheese. It's got a soft texture with a melting center, and they say here, an intense aroma. <laughs> Okay. So far, it doesn't sound so bad. No. Coming in at number eight, we have Provel. Okay. Provel cheese is from the United States. Yeah. This is a loaf-type cheese. It looks a little bit in pictures like Velveeta. Okay. It's got a different texture than that, and it's popular in St. Louis. Oh. According to bonappetit.com, Provel is a cheese made from a blend of cheddar, Ooh. Swiss, and provolone. Yum. It's got some preservatives, flavorings, and liquid smoke. Okay. And it's considered a pasteurized processed cheese. Sure. A Chicago-based importer of meats and cheeses was granted a trademark for Provel in 1950. Hmm. According to this article, there are debates about its true origin. Interesting. One of the theories is that a St. Louis restaurateur, Tony Costa, partnered with Hoffman Dairy in Wisconsin to invent the cheese specifically for pizza in the 1940s. Ooh, yum. The cheese was supposedly first used by Luigi's Restaurant in 1953, okay. but when Ed Imo, the founder of Imo's Pizza, first tasted this cheese in the 60s, he was so impressed that he made it Imo's signature cheese when they opened their first location in 1964. Ooh. This cheese has a low melting point and it's perfect for pizza. Wow. And they say here it leaves a luscious coating across the top, like a salty, velvety blanket. Yum. According to Emos, millions of pounds of Provel are consumed every year, but it's difficult to find this cheese virtually anywhere else in the United States. Aww. Now, I'm surprised this next cheese didn't score a little bit higher. Okay. This is number seven in our list. It's called Casu. Marzu. Marzu. We learned about this very interesting cheese yep. back in Season 1, Episode 4, one of our very first forays into learning about Ew. interesting cheese. Yeah. Casu Marzu is illegal to sell and consume. Good. According to tasteatlas.com, Casu Marzu Ew. originates in Sardinia. Gross. It's part of the Pecorino family of cheeses. It has a soft, ripened texture with a natural rind. Oh, yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, well, that doesn't sound too bad. No, I'm not thinking that. Oh, it is. This is number one in my category. Yeah. Casu marzu means rotten cheese. Yeah. And it's referring to the live yep. insect larva, <laughs> maggots, which are found inside. Ew. After it ferments, 
Larva is introduced to the cheese, yep. it promotes decomposition, Ew. and it breaks down the cheese's fat. <laughs> it says here it has an extremely soft texture. <laughs> sure. And they also mention here, which I don't know that we've talked about oh, this no. before, but they say to make sure to cover your eyes what? while eating kasu marzu, Why? because the maggots can leap up to six inches <laughs> off the cheese. <laughs> this should be number one. Yeah. Holy cow. Number six on our list is a German cheese. Oof. According to deutschdelicatessen.de, Hessian Hankus oh with music is a traditional cheese. Okay. This is a sour milk cheese. It was originally formed into balls by hand. It now uses the help of machines. Wow. The music refers to the sounds that the cheese makes when it's marinated with onions, oil, vinegar, pepper, and salt. Yeah. And sometimes a little bit of cider. Ooh. Hessian Hankus is not a sponsor, nope. but if it was, the ad would go right here. Have you ever wanted to listen to the web? Yeah. Well, Newsly makes that possible. They do? They're an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. Super app. You can listen to trending articles on the web on topics that you choose and get them read to you in a natural human voice. What kind of topics? Sports, cheese? tech, business, cheese. science. Cheese? I'm sure there's even cheese. Yeah. They even have an entire section for podcasts. Are we there? Of course we are. Ooh. It's one of my new favorite podcast apps. They even have digital radio. Holy cow. Just go to www.newsly.me to download it free. Whoa. Or use the link in the description. If you use the promo code CHEESY, Cheesy. that'll get you one month free premium subscription. Yay, Newsly. Now, back to the podcast. According to ForeverCheese.com, our number five on the list, Mestizo de Tolosa. Oh, no. I'm sorry for this pronunciation. Yeah, sorry. This is a sheep and goat's milk cheese. It dates back to the early 20th century. Whoa. They say the flavor is intense, clean, and pleasantly tart. Yum. It's rubbed in paprika, Ooh. and it has a characteristic orange color. Whoa. Once again, it does not sound as bad as Cassie Marzu. Yeah. Number four on our list is cup cheese. Okay. Cup cheese is a Pennsylvania Dutch cheese made by the Amish and Mennonite communities. Okay. According to Cheese.com, it's very soft, sour, and has an odor stronger than Limburger with a consistency yeah. resembling molasses. Okay. And it says here it's easy to make at home. Sure. You process American cheese and cottage cheese, okay. butter, cream, salt, okay. baking soda, water, and raw milk. Interesting. The cheese is stored in a pot or a cup in the refrigerator, okay. which gives the cheese its name. Cup cheese. It's typically homemade, and it's not easily found in stores. Still not Cassie Marzen. I agree. At number three on our list, we have Travia da Biera Biaxa. Is that really how you say no it? No idea. Oh but apparently this is a Portuguese whey cheese. It's made from either sheep or goat milk. Okay. And the whey left over from the cheese making operations. Okay. According to tasteatlas.com, it's delicate, okay. unfermented, has a grainy but spreadable texture and a pleasant, sweet lactic flavor. Ooh. I still don't know how some of these are making it in against... Cassie Marzu. I, I just don't understand why that's not number one. Me neither. Because number two on this list is Cheese Whiz. Oh, come Now, on. I realize that Cheese Whiz is a processed cheese sauce. Yeah. But it's not... Cassie Marzu, yeah. It, it, it doesn't have maggots right. in it, okay? Unless it's gone bad. Right. According to Wikipedia, Cheese Whiz was originally sold in 1952. Yum. It's orangish yellow in color. It comes in a glass jar. It's used as toppings for various foods like corn chips and hot dogs. Ooh, yum. It's also frequently used in Philadelphia-style cheesesteak sandwiches. Ooh. The original ingredients were American cheese, water, sure. non-fat dry milk solids, yeah. condensed whey, sodium phosphate, cream, Worcestershire sauce, lactic acid, mustard, salt, okay. and some coloring. Doesn't sound too bad. Today, the ingredients are whey, milk, canola oil, maltodextrin, milk protein concentrate, sodium phosphate, wow. less than 2% of modified food starch, salt, lactic acid, whey protein concentrate, mustard flour, Worcestershire sauce, wow. and a whole litany of other things. So it oh, yeah. is a processed cheese dip, Wow! but... I still don't think it's as bad as Cassie Marzi. Cassie Marzi, yeah. So while it's number two, I still think it shouldn't yeah. be this high up if you've got a maggot cheese on your list. Agreed. So here we go. Okay. Number one Ooh. on the list. Is it as bad as Cassie Marzu? It better be. Well, some might think it's pretty bad. Uh-uh. According to NorwayAtHome.com, there is a cheese called 
gamma lost. Is that how you say it? I may be pronouncing that wrong, correct. Oh, boy. In the How Gamma Lost Cheese is Made section of this website, they say here, and I quote, The old story is that you put cheese in an old sock, bury it in a pile of manure, and when it is finished, it will crawl out. But in reality, apparently an acid is added to skim milk, causing it to sour. After souring and curdling for several additional days, the fermented solids are pressed firmly into forms to create a shape. These cakes are repeatedly hand rubbed with different types of mold and they're set aside to age. Okay. When it's finished, the cheese is a golden brown color, yeah. and technically, it's in the blue cheese family, so you okay. might find blue or green flecks inside. Makes sense. They say here the texture is grainy, it looks like a muffin, okay. and when you pull it apart, strings appear. All right. It's moist but dries out after time. Oh, boy. And they say here it's an aromatic cheese with notes of ammonia Ew. or gym locker. That sounds bad. Okay, that one sounds pretty bad. I'm ready for a gym. Fondue. Okay. What did cheese do with a Kleenex? I don't know. It blew its nose. Oh, no. B-L-E-U, like blue cheese, it blew its nose. Get it? I get it. It was bad. Oh, I know. This whole episode was bad yeah. and a little bit cheesy. Thanks for listening to Just Cheesy, the podcast, episode 82, Bad Cheese, Bad Cheese. Thank you. We look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks. Easy, everybody.